This is part 11 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using query string parameters in ASP.NET Web API. Let's understand the query string parameters with an example. At the moment, the get method that we have in our employees controller returns the list of all employees. We want to modify this method in such a way that it returns employees by gender. So here is what we want to do. Notice in the URI, we are specifying gender using a query string parameter. If the value for this parameter is all, then we want the method to return all employees. If it's male, then only male employees. If it's female, then only female employees. We want to make this query string gender parameter optional. If we don't specify this parameter at all, then we still want the get method to return the list of all employees. And the value for this parameter should be either all, male, or female. If it is anything else, then we want the get method to return a status code of 400 bad request with a message saying value for gender must be male, female, or all. ABC is invalid. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio now. The first thing that I'm going to do here is include a parameter of type string. The name of the parameter is going to be gender. I'm also going to specify a default value. This default value makes this parameter optional. So in case if we don't specify a value for this parameter, then it's going to use this default value. I'm also going to change the return type of this method from I enumerable of employee to HTTP response message. And then inside our using block, let's switch on this gender parameter value. So let's use the switch statement. And let's first convert gender parameter value to lowercase so we can compare it with lowercase strings. And then let's use case all. So when the value for gender parameter is all, then we want to return the list of all employees. So let's use the request object dot create response. In this case, the HTTP status code is going to be OK. And then we want to return the list of all employees. So entities dot employees dot to list. Let's get rid of this return statement from here. And now let's make a copy of this case statement. Now, if the value for gender is male, then we want to return only male employees. So entities.employees.where employee such that employee.gender Let's convert this to lowercase so we can compare it with a lowercase string. So employee.gender.toLawyer equals male. And then convert that to a list and return. Let's make a copy of this one. In case if the gender is female, then we want to return only female employees. Now if the value is not all male or female, then it falls to the default case, in which case we want to return status code 400 with a message. So here, return, let's use the request object again, dot. This time we are going to use create error response. And the HTTP status code is going to be bad request. And we also want to specify a message. And the message is going to be this, value for gender must be all male or female. And we also want to include whatever value we have specified. For example, if we have specified ABC, which is invalid, that will be in this gender parameter. So let's include that as well. Here is invalid. All right, so let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's issue a request from the browser. Notice within the URI right here, we don't have the gender query string parameter at all. So in this case, it should return both male and female employees. Now let's include the gender query string parameter. Gender equals female. So in this case, it should return only female employees. This gender query string parameter will be mapped to this gender parameter right here. So let's issue the request. Notice we get only female employees. Let's change this to male. 
notice we are getting only male employees and if we change it to all we should get all both male and female employees here is the code that we just discussed thank you for listening and have a great day